Alrighty, everybody, welcome to the channel. This is going to be a Vagabond build. Sassiest girl. I uh, just uploaded a video, what will be hopefully yesterday or within the week of a level 65 playthrough that I did the same way. Gonna have a little bit less health and a little bit less strength on this playthrough, but I think it's doable. Uh, let's hop in. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I did on the level 60 playthrough or the level 65 playthrough. We're going to do it all on a level 50. And yeah, it's going to be super fun. Let's get into the first cutscene. The Fallen Leaves. Tell a story. is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Maricus' offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. of the Badlands, the ever-brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome Dung Eater, and Sir Gideon Ophnir, the all-knowing again bless a tarnished of no renown cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. Alrighty guys, there we are. Into the lands between. I'm gonna pick this up, because you can't open the door without it. The tarnished, wizened finger. 
Uh, you'll notice when you start with the Vagabond class, you actually do what's called heavy rolling. Which means that your rolls look like this. You have less invincibility frames, which means you get hit more by the bosses. So what we're going to do is just take care of that halberd. Go to your inventory, uh, X on Xbox controller, or square on PlayStation. Get rid of the halberd. That immediately brings us down to a medium roll. About doubles our iframes, if I remember correctly. Uh, we're going to go right over there to that first little arena-looking thing past that archway. And that's where we're going to face off with the first boss. I'm probably going to die. So are you. Don't worry about it. You don't have to beat him. You're actually kind of meant to die here. But I'm going to throw my headset on real quick. And then we're going to try our best to take him down. Alrighty, and we're back. Headset is on. Professional YouTube starter kit. Let's get in here and defeat this grafted scion. Uh, what you're going to want to do when he jumps over this pillar... You're going to want to do is hit him once and then raise your shield with left trigger or L2. Take that first hit and then use your heavy attack button, which is RB or R1. So you'll get hit, press that, and you'll do like a counter attack, basically, called a guard counter. But I know I'm going to die anyway, so I just want to smack the hell out of him. I'm going to two-hand my sword by pressing the action button, which is Y or triangle on controller, and then holding uh, RB or R1. So let's get in and fight this guy. And again, it does not matter if you beat this guy. You can literally go on that side and just jump off the cliff if you want as soon as he's gone. Oh shit! I... Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yell. Yell all you want. You're still gonna die. Ow. Oh, damn. Look at me go. Oh, shit. Look at me go. One more hit. That's it. All right, well, we got close enough. Whatever. It's not a big deal. Again, you're not meant to beat that guy at all. Hello, Torrent. You beautiful creature, you. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on her side. We found her here after all. One of her kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. She talking about me. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. Basically, that's her saying we gotta betray the gods. And you know what? I'm cool with that. Yeah, that's right. All right, get up. Time to wakey wakey. Okay, a few things I'm gonna run down with you real quick. These flasks, okay, these are automatically placed in your equipment loadout. 
There's the Flask of Crimson Tears. These will replace and replenish your HP or your health. And the Flask of Cerulean Tears, which will replenish or replace your FP or focus points. This is like your mana, your magic, etc. In order to access these, you're going to press the start or option menu and go into here. This is your main like screen for the whole game. When in here, you're going to go to equipment. And this is how you get your long sword. It's also how you unequip your halberd, shield, weapons, your talisman slots. You'll eventually have four of them. And then your flasks. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the Flask of Cerulean Tears. We don't need it for this playthrough. If you do need the Cerulean Tears, what I recommend you do is open this menu and then go over to the right where it says Pouch right here. What I recommend you do is I recommend you put the Pouch as the bottom one. So in order to access this, you're going to hold your action button and then you'll press down on the D-pad in order to select whatever's in this pouch icon. Just press Y to switch in your Cerulean Tear and there it is. So now if I want to take my Cerulean Tears, you hold Y. That brings up this secondary menu down in the bottom left. Again, Y or triangle, I'm just on uh, Xbox controller. So you'll hold Y or triangle and then in the bottom, you just press down on the D-pad, and that will have replenished your mana, your FP, your magic, whatever you want to call it. Your blue juice, essentially. Uh, Crimson Tears, in order to use your inventory items, your equipment items that you put down here in these 10 bars, you can have up to 10 things. Again, don't do that. It's ridiculous. It's a waste of your time. Um, in order to use those at any time, fighting, shooting, whatever, hitting, press X or square, and that will heal you. Again, X or square. One thing to point out, these golden trees are where you find golden seeds, which is what you should have taken as your keepsake item when creating your character as the Vagabond class. Golden seeds, after you acquire a certain number of them throughout the game, will increase the number of flasks that you have available to you. And you can distribute those however you like. You can have them all into the Crimson Tears or all into the Cerulean Tears and any option in between. At the end of the game, after you've done everything, you can have a total of 14 of them. We're only going to get about 10, which is plenty. I don't think we're going to need more than that. I might stretch and get the 12th, the 11th and 12th ones, but we'll see. This here is called a Sight of Grace. You're going to want to touch these. When you touch them, it activates it as a respawn point, as well as a fast travel location point. If you press your action button again, again, that's Y or triangle, you'll rest. And if you look at our Flask of Crimson Tears at the bottom left, you'll see I have one left. Let's just use the last one just for kicks. Now I have zero, so I can't heal anymore. If I try to, you'll see there's just nothing left. When you rest at these Sites of Grace, this will replenish your HP, your magic, and your stamina. As well as, if you leave the Grace, you'll see that my Flask of Crimson Tears and my Cerulean Tear Flask are both back now. So that also replenishes those. We're going to rest at the Site of Grace again. If you did take the Golden Seed, you're going to go to Flasks and add Charge to Flask. Use one golden seed, yes. And you can see my number in the bottom left just changed from three flasks of Crimson Tears to four. As the Vagabond, we are also going to allocate our flask charges, and this is how you differentiate between Cerulean and Crimson Tears. We are going to put all five into the Crimson category. Go ahead and allocate, confirm that, make sure, confirm again. Alrighty. Now, Memorize Spell is useful if you're a spellcaster, but I plan on doing a spellcaster playthrough. I'll explain that more then, after this Vagabond build is completed. Pass Time. This allows you to set the time until morning, until noon, or until nightfall. I recommend if this is your first playthrough and you're the target audience for this video, don't switch it to nightfall on purpose. There's just extra enemies, they hit a little harder at night. It's just not worth it. Unless you want more of a challenge, then sure. 
Also, though, this game is just beautiful during the day, so I would stick to morning or noon. Get up off the grace. This here, to the very right, this is called a stone sword key golem, I believe. And you can use stone sword keys to unlock these white barriers. So you can see this one has two slots, one in each of the golem's heads in the top. So you need two keys to unlock this barrier, usually for a dungeon, an area, or whatever. And then you can go down and you can fight whatever boss, get whatever gear is there, etc. Moving on back to the southwest, you're going to pillage these remains for the finger severer and the tarnished's furled finger. This allows you to summon cooperative players, as well as disband them from your world when you no longer want them with you. Hit the elevator. Again, this is going to be southwest of the Grace, if you got turned around for any reason. It's going to go up and rotate us to the north. And you're just going to walk straight up. There's nothing in here to collect, so don't worry about it. Just go up to this front door. You're going to press your action button to open it. And welcome, fellow Tarnished, to the lands between starting off in the section of the game known as Limgrave. I'm going to have an entire checklist in the description of everything that we go through. But, quick rundown for the first episode here. I'm going to try to keep it short. We're going to get to the first Church of Ella, right here, above my uh, character's helmet. We're going to collect Torrent, grab a gold-pickled foul foot, grab the map for Limgrave West. We are going to activate graces along the way by a crafting book as well as uh, three cracked pots, and take down our first boss. All right, everyone got it? Good, let's roll. This is called a material, this thing on the ground here. You're gonna pick it up, it's called a roa fruit. Boom, you can feed these to Torrent when his health is low in order to replenish. It's not really worth your time doing. Collect these as you go, they sell for 10 apiece. You kind of be surprised. You can get a few thousand runes by the end of the game after picking those up all the time. Again, this is a grace. Light all of these. You are going to touch every one of these, even if we never plan on coming back to this area. This area we will revisit soon, so go ahead and make sure you touch this grace right here next to this man named Vari. For this playthrough, you don't need to talk to him. Waste of our time. Now, this golden man that you can see kind of walking up the hill here. He's known as the Tree Sentinel. Fuck him. Don't look at him. Don't talk to him. Don't touch him. He's a bad person. Everyone dislikes this guy. He will fuck you up for hours on end until you get good. We're going to come back later and show him how to have a bad day. But onto the first area. Until you sh get Torrent, which I'll show you here in just a few minutes... Uh, you do have to run everywhere, so we're going to run over to the first church. These white skulls on the ground, you can roll over them and pick up these golden runes. They are completely random to have spawn, so I will not be using any of those in the playthrough. Run right up here to the north. There's this cracked section of wall. Light up the grace at the Church of Ella. Now that this grace is lit, it doesn't matter if we die to the Tree Sentinel on accident, because we have a respawn point right here. We don't have to walk up that little bit of road anymore. Walk out the southeast entrance to the church, go to this pillar right here, and you'll find yourself a golden rune too. That is 400 free runes for the taking. Head back northwest to the edge of the church inside. Pick up item. And congratulations, you picked up your first smithing stone. You need two of these to increase our main playthrough weapon once. You need a total of 12 to get it to plus 3. And we're going to need a lot of other smithing materials in order to max out our weapon way later on. This is Kale. He's our first merchant we acquire. I like to call him Santa because he's got the whole like hat thing You're going on. tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. 
Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. Hello, Kale. All right, now, if you go to sell, this is where you can sell these golden runes that we picked up. Again, this one, I will not be using. It is completely random. I don't expect you to have this 200 runes this early in the game. A little bit later, it's not going to matter if I use these or if you guys get these and use these. Because 200 runes is nothing. Like, really fast in this game. Uh, we're going to sell this golden rune too. So that's just going to be A on Xbox or X on PlayStation. A or X again to sell for 400 runes. Go to the purchase tab with Kale. And first thing we're going to pick up is the crafting kit. This is essential for this playthrough. I cannot deem that enough. This will give us extra damage to our weapons eventually through craftings of greases. This allows us to use the cracked pots that we're going to buy to make them into things so that we can use them as throwables. Uh, also lets us make our own arrows eventually, all sorts of different buffs, things like that. So we're going to pick that up. We have a hundred runes left. Goodbye. Nice to do business. Nice to do business with you as well, Kale. All right, head back over to the Grace in the Church of El. And see this golden light coming off the Grace. You can kind of see the specks and the light going up into the trees. This is called the Guidance of Grace. In Elden Ring, this is the Knuckles Uganda meme. Okay, this will show you the way. This is going to tell us exactly where we need to go. Right now, this is leading toward the Gatefront Ruins, Site of Grace, directly in front. So if you got on this thing and you went this way just like this, you would arrive there perfectly. However, I'm going to show you a few little pickups and a few little places to stop along the way. So we'll run out here, northeast section of the church. We're going to run straight northeast till that first guy there. So, if you still have your shield equipped, perfect. If you don't, and you're two-handing your weapon like I am, you're going to press your action button, hold it, and then press your heavy attack button, which will be RB or R1, and that will equip your shield. L2 is how you block. We're going to go up to this guy. Don't forget to grab all these flowers on the way. These are free money, people. Free money. You're going to press in on the right stick, or press R3, and that will lock on to an enemy for you. We're in a certain draw distance, so he's going to draw his sword. What you're going to do, hold your shield up. Again, that's L2 or left trigger. Go up to him. He's going to hit you with his sword, and you are going to press the heavy attack button. That's going to stagger him. Go up to him. Press your light attack button. And that will do what is called a repost. Does extra damage. And it just looks awesome. here, grab these roas. Now, right about this third roa bush, we're going to sneak. And the way you do that is you press in on the left stick or press L3. That gets you down into this crouched position, makes you harder to detect. Go back onto the main trail, a little bit north, and then you'll see this guy off to the left. Now, that white light in front of him, on that body, is an item drop on the ground. What it is, is six kukri. We're going to take them. We don't really need them, but we can sell them later if we need to. So again, lock onto this guy. Now, you don't need to repost him here. You can just straight up attack him like three times, but reposting is fun. So get up behind him. Completely stop moving before you do this, or it will not work. And press your light attack button. That'll do a repost. And against him, it is an instant kill. Pillage remains, and there is your four Kukri, correction, rather than six. You'll look more east, northeast, onto this guy, lock on, get back into sneak. We're going to walk up right behind him, and we're going to stop, and repost. Instant kill again, and we get a drop. I get this every time, and it is always Godric Soldier Gauntlets. However, I don't think that that is a guaranteed drop, so we're not going to use them. I think I've just gotten lucky. No need to sneak anymore. On to Gatefront Ruins. Now this little statue here is actually kind of fun to explain. This is called a Statue of America. 
This is a checkpoint in the game, other than the graces, usually found before bosses or important areas. Now, I don't have the telescope lit yet, but you can look above my character's head right there, that little yellow dot. That is the Gatefront Runes Site of Grace. If you look down to the east, you can see these bushes right here. Right above my character's head, you can barely see it right there, is another Site of Grace. That's called the Agil Lake North Site of Grace. We're going to go hit up both of those. So we're going to go Gatefront first. We're going to get Torrent. I'm going to show you how to get a map fragment. And then we're going to hit up Agil Lake North. All right, let's do it to it. Let's head on over. Now, I am going to show you guys how to efficiently and perfectly clear out this camp. It is not excellent. It's not easy. You might die a couple times your first time trying to do it. Just remember, it's not super important if you die. There's no negative effect overall on the game other than you have to go back and you pick up your runes. So we're going to walk over. Grab the grace. Get torrent. This is the grace you have to rest at. And you can see the guidance of grace is heading toward it. All these yellow particles, this is where you're supposed to go. Touch the grace. And then we're going to rest at the grace. And we're going to talk to Melina. Greetings. Hello. Traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. I can play the role of maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Now this, you have to accept this. If you don't accept this, you can't get Torrent. Now, you can get Torrent later, but you can't level up until you accept this either. It's kind of... I don't know why they put a refuse option in here. It's kind of pointless. Just accept it. Settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah, another matter. And she I gives you a torrent. to you this ring. The Spectral Steed Whistle. I'm going to show you exactly where to put this and how to use it to summon torrent here in just a moment. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. I'm gonna respect the shit out of him. But alrighty, you can kind of see now it's nighttime. Do not pass time. I repeat, do not pass time. This is important. Don't do that. A level up screen. This is the first time we've seen this now that we have met Melina and she's agreed to be our maiden. Shall I turn your runes to strength? Let my hand rest upon you. For but a moment, share them with me. Now, this of thing course, does not happen every time. Your ambitions, the principles you would follow. You don't have to hear this speech every time you level up. It is only this first time and only at this grace. 
Now, you can see the top left is our current level. You start the Vagabond build at level 9. Uh, below that is Runes Held. We have 305. Below that, Runes Needed. That is the amount of runes in red there that we need to level up. So right now we have 300. We need a total of 811 in order to make our next level up. You can see your attribute points below runes needed. Vigor, that's your health stat. This caps in 20s. It's called a soft cap. So if you're at 20 vigor and you have an option to get, you know, a little bit of strength or a little bit of health and that's all you can get, you want to get... Uh, strength or whatever instead, but we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to show you exactly when and exactly where to level up all the time throughout this playthrough. So Vigor is health. Mind is your magic, as well as your uh, focus points, your FP, your mana, etc. Endurance is your stamina, and also increases the amount that you can equip when loading through the game. So your armor, weapons, talismans, etc. all have a certain weight attached to them. And your maximum equip load is what decides, a percentage of your maximum equip load, is what decides whether you are in light, medium, or heavy load. At the beginning of the game, when we couldn't run, or we couldn't uh, roll fast, that was because we had that halberd equipped. If we would have had higher endurance, that wouldn't have been a problem. Uh, strength, pretty self-explanatory. It increases our physical damage with weapons, as well as our defense against physical Strike slash pierce damage, magic, fire, lightning, and holy. And every level up will increase our immunity to poisons, status effects, uh, all of that stuff. Dexterity is going to increase how fast you attack, as well as how quickly you cast spells and incantations. Again, I'm going to get more into that in another playthrough that I plan on doing, and I'll describe what dexterity does for them more on in that playthrough. Intelligence is required to cast certain spells. We're not going to mess with that stat at all. Again, I'll touch on that in the next playthrough. Faith is the same way. Incantations instead of spells. I'll explain it. And Arcane boosts your Discovery, which is your luck stat. So every monster in this game has a chance to drop certain items. Whether it's a 1% chance all the way up to a 50% chance, your Discovery is what increases that chance from, you know, 1% to 5 or 6%, so on. And there's items you can get through the game that also help increase that. We're not going to touch Arcane. We're, we don't need anything that's randomized. We don't need to find any random weapons, any random things that we're not going to be able to find otherwise. Everything we're getting through this playthrough is 100% a guaranteed drop and will be 100% guaranteed armor, weapons, etc. Nothing that we get in this playthrough is a randomized thing, I promise. You're not going to have to farm for any sort of weapon. Uh, since we don't have any runes needed to level up, we're going to exit. And then exit one more time, close this menu. That'll stand us up. Melina will dissipate. No worries, she'll be back. Open your map on the uh, Xbox controller. This is to the left of the share button in the middle of the controller. And I believe on PlayStation, it is the control pad. So, we'll scroll out, just pressing down on the right thumbstick. And move a little right where it says Gate Front Runes. If we zoom back in by pressing up on the right thumbstick, you'll see this little glowing obelisk. This is where the map fragment is. We're not going to get it right now, because I'm going to show you how to get a little bit of stuff for free. So, with the map open, we are at Gate Front Runes. You want to use your left stick to move the icon, and we're going to go right down here to where it says Church of Ella until you get that little snap on. You can see it kind of locks on to the Sites of Grace. We're going to teleport back to the Church of Ella and get a free summon. This way, Tarnished. May I have a word? You may. This mysterious stranger clouded in all the uh, fog and the hat is Ronnie. She is a demigod who killed her own body, and now she's in this body, whatever. She's basically a puppet. We're going to marry her later. We're going to walk up to her, and we're going to tell her that we have access to the Spectral Steed, and she's going to give us a Spirit Calling Bell, as well as the Spirit Ashes for the Wolves. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the Witch Renna, 
Liar. I'd heard tell of a tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. No, you haven't. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. It is. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. I can. So here, you want to select, I can call the spectral steed. It's just the first option. You just press A or X. You'll pick it perfectly. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee by Torrent's former master. All right, and like I said, you get the spirit calling bell, which is used to summon spirit ashes to aid you in battle, and the lone wolf spirit ashes. Now, these guys are okay. It summons three pretty low-level wolves to help you. Uh, mainly, it's only going to be good for large groups of enemies, and we're actually going to see that really soon. Tis a bell for calling forth spirits. Ah, thank you. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. All right, talk to her Forgive again. mine intrusion tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. We will. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder, before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? All right. Goodbye, Ronnie, or Rena, as you want to be called for right now. Now, you're going to want to open your equipment menu. Again, that's the start button. That brings you to this screen. Go to your equipment tab, select it, and we're going to scroll down next to our flask of Crimson Tears. And in the second slot, the one just to the right, we're going to click A or X on PlayStation. Go down to the Lone Wolf Ashes, and we are going to equip slash remove them. You can see in the bottom of the screen all the tip menus. So equip it. That's done. It's it. As soon as it's got that marker above it, that means it's equipped. Go back, and you can see that is now equipped in our slot. Back out completely. On this menu, you're going to want to press down on the D-pad, and that will switch us from the Flask of Crimson Tears to the Lone Wolf Ashes. You're only ever going to have, throughout this playthrough, two things down in this hotbar. So at the start of the fight that we're going to use them in, we're going to summon the wolves, and then we're going to switch back to the Flask of Crimson Tears so that we can panic heal when we need to. Alrighty, back up to the map. Let's head back over to Gatefront, and I'll show you how to clear this camp, get the map piece, get our starting weapon, maybe our weapon for the whole run, and then we'll go get a few other things. Alrighty, here we are. Gatefront runes. Takes a little while to load for some people. I'm going to cut out the travel times just so you guys don't have to watch it, obviously. Rest at the Sight of Grace. And this is the first time we're going to use the past time mechanic. You can see those bats over there next to the tree. Those are going to go away. So we're going to pass time. We're going to go until morning, because right now it is nightfall. You're going to see the clock wind to the left. And the bats are gone. Those are just extra enemies that pop into the game for literally no reason other than to screw us over. So, now that it's morning, they are gone. We're going to go down this guy right above me. We're going to kill him. Make sure you're crouched. Lock onto him. Walk up behind him. Don't worry, you can get pretty close to him. Just try to stick to this carriage as close as you can. Hug the wheel. Hug the bar. Get up behind him. Stop. Light attack. And that's an instant kill. Now, after he's killed, this guy that's walking toward us right now, on the right, has a bell. That is important to note. Hop up here. Open this chest. And pick up item. This is our starting weapon. The Lord Sorn's Greatsword. The weapon we have is garbage in comparison. Greatswords do much more damage. They also have a better heavy attack option. Go back to your Equipment tab, go to your right-hand armament, select your longsword, and then we are going to switch to the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. Now this message here, unable to use this item effectively with present attributes unless wielded with both hands. That is due to a mechanic in the game 
that raises our strength with a weapon if we two-hand the weapon. So we're going to equip it. You can see now that it is our main hand weapon. It is only wielded in the right hand. If you attack with this sword, you're going to attack slower, and you're going to deal a lot less damage. So you're going to hold your action button and press RB or R1, and that two hands your weapon. This will now attack faster, with more power, do more damage, and we no longer get the negative penalty of not being able to equip it. You can see now that it's two-handed, the X has gone away over the weapon. So, what we're going to do is we are now going to pick up the flail. You're going to head to the carriage, go to the left or northeast around the carriage. Also, a quick thing to note, with this weapon, if you two-hand it, don't think that you just have to take blunt damage to the face anymore. You don't. You can still hold left trigger or L2, and you'll block with the sword. Kind of put your hand behind it, and you absorb a little bit of the damage. I think you absorb, I believe it's 50% damage, rather than 100 from the shield, but 50 is better than nothing. So we're going to go down here. Wait till this guy with the torch turns back around that way. Get into sneak so he doesn't detect you going this way. And you're going to see this guy with the torch. Ignore him. Go toward this guy with the torch. You're going to sneak up behind him. And you're going to kill him. This guy with the shield's activated. Make sure to run to the left of him. Go up this hill. Draw him away from the other people so that they do not hear him. Block. And then repost. Block. Wait for his attack. And then have him. Now he's reposted. And you can get that sweet, sweet extra damage. And that guy is none the wiser. We'll pick up our smithing stone one. This is not a guaranteed drop. Roll over your skull if you have it here. Because why not? Now, with this sword equipped, we don't have the endurance to medium roll anymore. This isn't important, you're just going to be dodging and blocking for this enemy, these enemies anyway in this camp. But, you can see, I'm now heavy rolling again. Until we get our endurance up a little bit, we're going to need to take off our gauntlets. This only reduces 3.3% physical damage anyway, it's not a huge deal. Just take it off, and we're back in medium load. Perfection. Alright, now, get this guy's attention. Or sneak up behind him, whichever you want to do. You can either block and repost him, or you can just stab him in the back and instant kill him. These enemies are not hard to kill. It's a very simple, simple area to go through. We're just going to take down as many of them as we can. So, next thing we do is we go forward from killing the guy in the alley with the torch. Go southwest. You'll see this guy walking. Okay, see that thing on his hip? That's the bell. That's what we want to avoid. So we're going to go up behind this pillar right here. We're going to hide behind this pillar. And now that he's this way, run up behind him while crouched. And just instant kill him. If he blows that horn, if he blows that horn, every enemy in this camp will come after you. You will probably die if you are new to Souls games. It is not fun to deal with all of these guys at once. I had to do it my first playthrough. It sucked. Now, wait till this guy that just turned around right there to the right of the pillar turns around. That's the camp boss, or just kind of the head honcho. He's not really a boss. Go up here to this purple on the ground, pick it up, and that is our map fragment. Go back to the bush, press the map button, bring it up, and a map has been found for Limgrave West. This lets you see points of interest, all your graces, uh, different bodies, bodies of water, elevation, topographical locations. Super useful to get the maps unlocked. Don't think you don't need to do it. Okay, so we're going to wait for him to turn around again. Okay, now we're going to go over to the right and kill this guy that's sitting down. Just walk up behind him while crouched. Stop and light attack, and he's dead. Perfect. He'll destroy that, and then you want to pick up these smoldering butterflies. These are important. These are really important. Pick these up. Now, 
we are going to take on the camp boss next, because we can. Run around here to the northeast, through the alleyway, you killed the guy with the torch in. Swing back at the east, after the runes end. Run to this carriage here. We're going to pick up a flail out of this chest, and we're going to sell it later for some runes. We don't need this. It's not our kind of weapon. It is a dexterity weapon. So, we're just going to get rid of it. Come down around this rock, and you'll see the camp boss. Okay, here he is. You want to get his attention. As soon as he does this, stay. This guy to the right, that I just marked with my pointer, he will come after you if he has to. So here, he's chasing me. Switch over to your wolves. Get in distance of the camp. Summon your wolves. It's okay if you take a hit here. Alright, now the wolves will take his attention. And you can hold your heavy attack button and do a charged attack. Infinitely roll with B or circle if you need to. Don't be afraid to use your flask. It is not a big deal if you die here. Use your flasks. Boom. Camp boss dead. There's not really a perfect way to script the fight. He's got a couple different ways that he attacks, so just do your best you can. Uh, stay within this area and your wolves won't despawn like mine did. I just went too far away. Not a big deal. Just not a big deal. Now, we have the map fragment, so we're going to run up here, grab these smoldering butterfly from the west. We're going to look at this guy from the south, and he's going to charge us. Go ahead. Charge us. Here he comes. Block. And counter. And kill. Perfect. Big man down. All right. We're going to run back to the northwest, up the main path. And we're going to swing right above my character's head up this way. Kind of see in this bush. We're going to head up here. Swing around the runes. There's a little opening. And you can see this guy. There's two guys in here. You're going to sneak, kill this guy with a riposte behind him, and then the other guy will aggro from the right. You can kind of see him there in the bush. Kill this guy instantly. And now this guy with the shield is mad at us. Just block. Roll away. Sometimes it doesn't work if they do, like, a counter. With the guys with the shields, you have to wait until the second hit. So hold your sword up to block. He's going to hit you once, twice, and then do your heavy attack button, and that will get you to stun him. So you can see he's dead now. In this little area, the reason we came here is up to the right. We're going to go to this body and collect these remains for rune fragments. We are not going to use these, but they're kind of a cool thing to collect if you want. Before you jump off these rocks, press crouch, and we're going to walk up behind this guy with the shield, and we're just going to repost kill him. And he's dead. Goodbye, sir. Now, there's about four enemies left. Maybe five if you include all the wolves and everything. We don't technically have to kill these guys. It's, it's very important. You don't have to kill these guys. I am going to, but I'm also going to show you where to go if you just have to run past them, and for whatever reason, you just can't kill these guys. It's not a super big deal if you can't. However, if you go to the equipment tab, and you add, just really quick, your Kukri that you picked up earlier, this is not something you have to do by any means. You're going to target this guy, go to your Kukri, and you're going to press X, which is your use button for your equipment tab down here. You're going to get a little closer, press X, and he has that big hammer. Okay, so when he's running toward you, you have another one, and he's almost dead. Wait for him to get close, and hit. Just a light attack while he's charging you, and he's dead. For this wolf, wait till he stands still. And he's dead. Next wolf, same thing. And he's dead. 
Now, these two guys both have torches. So we're going to run up to them and press your heavy attack button. Ooh, they actually spread out. Okay, not a big deal. This guy's coming toward us. No problem. Same strategy. Block. Repost. Stab him while he's down. And he's dead. Now that leaves one left. He came around here. He went back to his left. This is his normal position. You're going to get up behind him. Stab him in the back like a bad friend. And he's gone. Now that that you just heard, that little red aura that glue around me, that is called an enemy group refill. When you kill an encampment or a group of enemies, depending on the size, you will get from one to all of your flasks back. So you can see I only had two flasks left. I now have five because I killed everybody here. After you've used your Kukris and defeated these guys, don't forget, go back in, remove them. Press X or Square on PlayStation, and remove them from your inventory. Now, this is why we're here. Other than the map fragment, this little tunnel, right here, inside the ruins, is why we're here. This gives us the Whetstone Knife, as well as an Ash of War that we probably won't use and the knife will allow us to add different Ashes of War to our Lord Sworn's Greatsword. Right there. That's what we're here for. This is the most important thing at this entire encampment other than our weapon. This lets us put different Ashes of War for different boss fights on our sword so that we can have a little bit of an easier time. Now, coming out of this tunnel, you're going to be facing almost directly east. You're going to turn your camera to be directly east and run that direction. You can see this bush just to the right of directly east. Run through it. And this is the Agil Lake North side of Grace. You're going to touch it. We're going to rest at it. And now that we have all of our stats healed, our health and our FP are back, You'll notice also, everybody at the camp has respawned. Basic non-boss enemies will always respawn after you rest at a grace. So don't think you can kill half of them, go rest, and then go back. They will always respawn after you rest at a grace. This is super important. Alright, now, next thing we do, we get Torrent. Go to your Equipment tab. Your, uh, sorry, your main menu. And instead of going to equipment, you're going to go back over to the pouch. In the up on the D-pad selection, which is the top left of the pouch, you're going to press Y on Xbox or a triangle on PlayStation. And you're going to go three to the right to the Spectral Steed Whistle. You're going to click A on Xbox or X for PlayStation. And you're going to equip that. Now, the way you use this is the same way as I showed you to use your FP flask earlier. Hold Y and you're just going to press up on the D-pad. That'll summon your Spectral Steed, Torrent, your Majestic Steed with the horns. This is a game changer. If you had to play this game without Torrent, I'm 95% sure half the people who play it would have quit. So I'm going to show you exactly where to go next. We're going to go down this road, across this bridge, over here, and right up, I believe about here, I'll show you for sure, is going to be a gold pickled foul foot. Now that, when taken, will increase your uh, runes acquired by 20% for 3 minutes. So we're going to go get that. It is important for early leveling. So, get on torrent, and just the same as the sprint button is B or circle when you hold it down. You can tap B or circle, and that gives Oi. Torrent a little boost. You, you there. Leave me alone. Hit those guys on your way by with your sword. You'll insta-kill them. Kill this little roach on the ground, on the brick. You can just kind of walk toward him. That gets you determination. Head to the right of the bridge, right here. And that is a guaranteed smithing stone one drop. 
Stay to the right. You don't want to mess with that guy on the horse. He has a weapon called a dismounter. When you come up to this cliff, go to the left of it. And we're going to go up on top of this little cliff here. So just round about all the way to the back. Up these rocks here. Head back to the right. To the tip of the cliff where this guy is. And we're just going to sneak in with the horse. Grab the gold pickled foul foot. Now, if you don't have the ability for whatever reason to do that, you can run through with the horse. Mark these guys up. And use your rolls. And just attack these guys. It's not a big deal. They don't do a lot of damage. You don't have to use heavy attacks like I was. You can just press right trigger or R2. Do your little quicker attacks. And you'll kill them just as fast. You can come up to the post. And you can stand on top of it and collect it. If you don't want to try to grab it with the horse. It's not a big deal either way. No one's going to get mad at anybody here. For doing stuff the harder way or the easier way if you can't do it. So again, hold your action button up on the D-pad to summon Torrent. And now that we have it here, we're going to head down this way. And we're going to go all the way across this bridge. I'm going to show you how to cross it without dying. And we're going to go to about here where there's a Site of Grace. So run down the hill. Make sure not to fall too far. You will take damage. Just run through all these guys. Don't even worry about them. You don't have to try to swing at them. You don't have to try to kill them or nothing. This guy here, that sword he has, that is called a dismounter. If you get hit with that, you will instantly fall off your horse. And you will be facing them head on. And I do not recommend that early game if you're inexperienced with these games. We're going to head straight south along the path. Go a little right off the path to avoid that guy on the horse. And just to the right is this side of grace right here. We're going to touch the grace to discover it. And right above my head, to the southeast of the grace, this is a mushroom. You use this in a bunch of crafting recipes, most notably in pots. Most pots that require ingredients to be made will need mushrooms. Every time you pick these up, you get three of them. Now, when we need mushrooms, we're going to come back to this grace. You rest at it to reset the world, and there's mushrooms. You're going to pick it up. That's two mushrooms. Rest at the side of grace. Get up out of the side of grace, and you're going to pick up the mushrooms. One mushroom. Now, I don't know if this has a random ingredient, but we're going to do this right now until we have 20 of these mushrooms. That should be plenty for most of the walkthrough. All right, and that is 20 mushrooms gathered. Just go into your inventory through the main menu selection. Go from here, press RB or R1 twice, and this gets you to your crafting ingredients list. And you can see mushrooms, and we have 20 of them. We don't need them right now, but this is going to save us a little time in the future coming back to pick these. Uh, it looks like it is 1 to 3 every time you pick them, with the uh, loading being slightly loaded toward 1. If you want to sit here and collect like 100 of these, no one's going to stop you. The rest of us are probably going to come back and pick up some more eventually anyway. Alright, so everyone now, get back on Torrent. See this guy with the horse? You want to beat him to the road, jump over here, and just get up on the road. We're going to run straight southeast, follow the main road, the one with the bricks on it, of course. Hit this guy for fun, or miss because I suck. Either way is fine. Now, when you get down here to this location, do not go straight on the bridge. Do not do it. You will get hit by a giant ballista. So you're going to go to the left here. Wait till he shoots. He's going to miss. You're going to go left around here. Grab this. Smithing stone one times three as well as that stone sword key on your way through. Welcome to the Weeping Peninsula, and welcome to your first Sight of Grace in it. Now, in order to get these guys de off of us, rest at the Sight of Grace, and that'll reset their aggression. Now, head back to the east until you get back to the main road. You'll see these bodies on the floor. 
This little lady is named Irina. Hello? We're gonna talk to her. Is somebody there? Might I bend your ear for a moment, please? My name is Irina. I've escaped from Castle Morn to the south. The servants there have rebelled. I... I can't be sure what it is. My eyesight's been weak since birth, you see. But I swear I heard frightful howling from all over. My good father secreted me out the castle, but decided himself to stay. He says it's his duty. As commander. I... Talk to her again. I fear for father's life. The servants are full of wrath. Filled with hatred for every one of us. They've since come for every one of the companions I escaped with. They haven't spared a soul. I fear it's no different at Castle Morn. Please, I implore you. Would you mind taking a letter to my father? At the castle, my sole wish is that he escape. Even if his honor should be the price. Please. I just want him to be safe. Choose to deliver the letter. Dearly. Then... And take Irina's letter. To my father, who remains in the castle, if you please. Now, this isn't a huge deal if you don't want to do this little quest line we're going to do in the next episode. It's just a real quick little quest line, and we're going to kill the guy a little sooner than we're technically supposed to. But it's going to give us a plus eight weapon that we can use until we get our Lord Sword and Great Sword uh, Smithing Stones up to par. Now, continue down the road, back onto Torrent, head southwest along the road again. Mushroom to the left, grab it. And then go to this carriage. We're going to go to the front side of this carriage here. Jump off your horse. Jump up here. Grab the Morning Star. Back onto the Torrent. Grab everything, Smithing Stone 2s. And up here, this beetle, you will kill it. As you can see, you don't have to be super accurate. And there is Mighty Shot. Kind of an important Ash of War, not really for our playthrough, but it's a good one, and if we need to, we can sell it. Now, since we followed the road, grabbed the Morning Star, up here to the left is a Free Sight of Grace, and another merchant. This is not Kale, this is a completely separate merchant from the first one. So, touch the side of grace. No need to rest, because we didn't lose anything. And we're going to talk to this merchant. I am not selling. We are purchasing. Now, through his shop, you can see he sells cuckery. He sells these in an unlimited supply. You can get as many of these from him as you want. They make clearing the wolves in areas real, real easy. They are one-shot kills through most of the game for wolves. He also sells, lucky for us, three Smithing Stone 1s. We're going to buy all three of them. Up to this point, you should have about 1,800 runes if you killed the three guys next to the Gold Pickled Foul Foot. Buy all three for a measly 600 runes. And now we should have a total of eight guaranteed for everybody. Only four off from plus three in our weapon. He does sell one smithing stone, two. Only 400 runes. Let's buy that as well. So now, not including random drops at this merchant, we should have a total of eight smithing stone ones and two smithing stone twos. This is good. This is where we are supposed to be. Get back on torrent. Head from the merchant to the rune, or to the grace, sorry. And if you look east, you'll see this little, like, tornado-looking thing. This is called a spirit spring. This helps you jump higher when you're on the horse. You want to look up and see this little tower? Face the tower and jump in the spirit spring. Press forward the whole time, and you'll land inside the castle. Pillage these remains for the great turtle shell. This is useful later. It, it aids in stamina recovery per second. Gives you two, maybe three, I think, stamina per second while it's equipped. Now, jump out of the tower. Head back over to the ledge. And you're going to run off. Press your jump button twice. 
And there you go. You'll land safely inside the area of the Spirit Spring. No fuss, no muss. Head southwest through this castle wall that's been destroyed, obviously, by something. Head down, and you'll see that pillar. That pillar is another map fragment. We are going to pick it up. Again, just head to it with the horse, walk up to it, pick up item, beware of arrow, head this way, southwest, up the hill, to these rocks, get up on them, and then double jump up here. This tree has a golden seed for us, take it, turn around, and hightail it the hell out of here. We are going back northeast up the trail, back to the site of grace. Run. That golem is very inaccurate. Don't worry about him. Now, at the merchant, I'm going to show you. I'm finished yet. We're going to talk to him. Go to sell. And you can sell all of these ingredients that you've picked up. So I've picked up randomly 18 roa fruit and five earthly flowers. That is a 180 plus 50, 230 total runes that we can get just from selling these things that we've accumulated just in this first little episode. Pretty crazy. We're not gonna sell them now. I don't wanna sell them because people might not pick them up. It's not a big deal. I will sell them later on if we're a couple hundred runes short for stuff. Not a big deal, guys. You'll have the skull runes. You'll have extra runes and stuff like that. Uh, go over to the grace. Don't rest. Load into your inventory. And make sure we cap off this episode number one with the correct amount of stuff. So, if everything went to plan, you will have five flasks of Crimson Tears. One Gold Pickled Foul Foot. The Lone Wolf Ashes with Spirit Bell. Two Smoldering Butterfly, and 20-ish Mushrooms. Just have minimum 20. If you don't want to collect them now, when we go to craft stuff, you'll have to collect them then. You should have a minimum of one Golden Seed in your possession, along with eight Smithing Stone 1s and two Smithing Stone 2s. For key items, you should have a Stone Sword Key, Irina's Letter, the Crafting Kit, the Spirit Calling Bell, and the Whetstone Knife, along with two map pieces. You should not have any sorceries, any incantations, and you should only have three Ashes of War. For melee armaments, you should have your starting longsword, your longsword's greatsword, the morning star. This is important. Make sure you have this. If you didn't pick this up because of the dogs, it is okay to die, grab this, and then get your runes back. Make sure you have this before the next episode. You should have the Flail, we're going to sell that, as well as the Halberd, again, we're going to sell that. Shouldn't have any ranged weapons, shouldn't have any arrows or bolts unless you got them as a drop, you can sell them if you did. And you should have two shields, the Heater Shield and the Green Turtle Shield. Should just have your base armor, unless you got a randomized drop. And about the knowledge, this is just random tips and tricks that you pick up throughout the game as you play and it'll show you things that you may have forgotten. But alrighty guys, that is it for episode number one of the Vagabond Pure walkthrough. We have the Lord Sworn's Greatsword, enough runes and smithing stones to get it to plus two, and next episode we'll be taking on Castle Morn, talking to Irina's father, getting to Margit, and getting to the round table hold to increase our weapon's attack power. Lots planned for the next episode. If you liked this episode or this video walkthrough, go ahead and leave me a like down below. Leave me a comment on what you would add to it if you have any ideas. Or let me know if you missed anything and how to get it. Again, I'll list all the steps down in the description. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget, like, subscribe as I said. And I hope you have a great night.